this is our audience tonight. They don't know we're watching them, but there are surprises in store for Robert Muir. Will he recognize his little sisters after 32 years? Betty Martin, will she get in a spin over a golden oldie? And Katie Hazan, what will she think of a film starring her own daughter? For these people and more, it's surprise, surprise! Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Scylla Black. Welcome to another surprise, surprise. And my first surprise tonight is, is for one of our viewers. And she's sitting out there at home and she's only 30 knots. And she lives in Edmonton in North London. Are you watching in your house, Tiffany Pierce? And do you recognize this? Yes, it's a letter you wrote to me. And when I read it out, your brother Dean is going to get a big surprise. Because it says, Dear Scylla, I think you do a wonderful job finding people who have lost touch with each other. But could you please help me? I don't want to find anyone. I just want to lose my elder brother, Dean. <laughs> and I shall tell you why, because he always torments me. And he's only nice to me when he wants to borrow me Walkman. <laughs> or is that walk person? I don't know. <laughs> well, I tell you, Tiffany, listen to Auntie Scylla. I think I've solved your problem. Because I'm sending you a couple of tickets to see the show of next week's, all right? And if Dean's not nice to you between now and then, you tell him you'll bring somebody else, all right? So, Dean, if you're watching, be nice to your little sister in future, all right? Okay. Well, now, usually we, we spring lots of surprises on people sitting here in our audience. But earlier tonight, we surprised all of them as they were queuing up to come in. <laughs> yes, you remember that, don't you, audience? <laughs> And that was when our Bob Carolges went out in search of a star. Okay, Silly, here we go. Come on. Hello. Okay, let's get those doors open. And we'll see who's here. <laughs> well, well, well. Look at this lot. Surprise, surprise, everybody. How are you? All right. All right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, a bit of quiet to the back, please. Shut your faces. Shh. Now, unfortunately, we've got a bit of a problem with tonight's show, ladies and gentlemen, because there's a big gap with nothing to fill it. So, uh, I'm actually looking for volunteers. If anyone can sing or tell a joke or tap dance, and I'll come around. We need something to fill. Five minutes. You're going to make a star out of somebody. All right. I'll get to you. Now, what do you do, sir? Anything special? No, I'm a porter in a oh. post office. No, I mean, what do you do talent-wise? You sing or do you dance? <laughs> well, all. Thanks very much. Right. <laughs> what do you do? Well, I said you want to do a bit of dancing on a night like this. It's freezing. I can't dance. Can you dance? I'll do a dance for you if you like. Got, right, we found somebody who's going to do a dance. Here we oh, go. Got any music? No, no any music. music. Hold that for me, darling. <laughs> right, here we go. Talented as him. What do you do? Did you know any jokes or anything? I could do normal wisdom. Normal wisdom? Oh, we've got an impression here. Yeah, right, normal wisdom. <laughs> Miss Ruth <Rubedale? laughs> <laughs> Miss Bob. That's you, Bob. Yes. <laughs> Who wrote that script? Spit the dog. Yeah. Yeah. All right, now, well, let's see, let's see. We, I'll give you a bit of an idea now. We've got, uh, we got some things here for you to practice on. Would you prefer spoons or a comb? Well, I'll do the comb. Comb? There's a comb. You got any idea what you're going to play? Keep practicing. Oh, I'll give you a piece of paper as well. Now, you play, what do you want to play for us on the comb? How do you do it? Where do you, where, where do you put it? Oh, I don't know. Now you ask <laughs> you make, it's like that. You're... Brilliant. Very brilliant. Excellent. 
She's a talented one, isn't she? She's really marvellous. Really? A singer? Yes, yeah, she sings. She You're sings a singer? Really, oh, lovely. What's her favourite song? Uh, Delta Dawn. Delta, Delta Dawn? Dawn. Oh, good. Delta Dawn. Come out here, my darling. Delta Dawn, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Delta Dawn, what's that flower you have on? Could it be a faded rose from days gone? <laughs> Very good. That's brilliant. Delta Dawn, ladies and gentlemen. Very good. Oh, Right, what jokes do you know? Well, a song. We had Delta Dawn, we had some lovely ones. What oh, do you know? It's funny, I've suddenly got amnesia. Amnesia? <laughs> Get the nurse. Bit of amnesia. I can't do it. There's very few people with talent. In fact, I think the best one, the one we're going to make uh, a real star of tonight, is the Delta Dawn lady. You come with me. Yeah. Yes, come on. <laughs> Delta Dawn, Delta Dawn. We're going to make you a star. We're going to make you. Bobby always picks the good-looking ones, doesn't he? I quite like the tap dancers, didn't you? Yes, but Delta Dawn got it because she's ever so pretty. Anyway, I shall look forward to that later on. But now it's syllogram time. And this week, it's for Gladys Edwards, who has been teaching young children for nearly 30 years. Now, I went to surprise Gladys in a morning assembly at Holbrook Primary School in Suffolk. morning. Here I am in school again. I'm going to surprise somebody rather special. Her name is Mrs. Gladys Edwards. Oh, look. There's their classroom. But they're in assembly at the minute, so let's go and surprise her. Oh, this takes me all back. It does. Look at this. Any, any Enid Blyton's anywhere? Or Noddy? You would... Listen, they're singing. It's now a lovely tune. Absolutely marvellous. I hope she enjoys the tune I'm going to give her. I'm going to deliver a special syllogram today. Where do I go now? Where do I go? Oh, doesn't that sound lovely? Boy, just to burst in. <laughs> I love surprises, don't you? Surprise, surprise. Excuse me. Excuse me. Could you, could you, could you stop? Could... Shh. Hello, everyone. Hello. Surprise, surprise. I've come along here to your school today. I want them to help me. I'm looking for somebody rather special. Her name is Mrs. Edwards. Could you point her out to me? Surprise, surprise, Mrs. Edwards. <laughs> Please, can I call you Gladys, Mrs. Edwards? I suppose you want to know why I've come here today, don't you? I do indeed. Well, all your family and friends, because you've been such a devoted teacher, well, for 30 years, is that right? Yes. And they all think that you deserve a syllogram. Thank you very much. <laughs> and I want all the children here today to help me. You will help us, won't you, children? Yes. That nice. Now you've got a burning ambition to sort of fly off. Can you explain what you want to? Why do you want to fly off? To and what in? Up in a in a balloon, in a hot air balloon. You want to go up in a hot air balloon? <laughs> well, surprise, surprise, Gladys. You're gonna go up today. <laughs> To ride in my beautiful balloon Would you like to glide in my beautiful balloon We could float around the sky together, you and I But we can fly, we can fly Up, up and away Beautiful balloon. It was a nice face in my 
for a cloud to guide us If by some chance you'll find yourself loving this We'll find a cloud to hide us Keep the moon beside us Up, up and away Did you enjoy that? It was an unforgettable day. Thank you very much. I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> I get nosebleeds walking down the stairs. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Gladys Edwards out there. Right now, I'm looking for Robert Muir. He's sitting in our audience tonight. Where are you, Robert? Now, Robert, you wrote me a very touching letter, and if you'd come and join me, I'd like to tell everybody all about it. Could you come and join us, Robert, please? How do you do? Please sit down. Now, Robert, you wrote a lovely letter to us, didn't you? And I know that you're living in, in Lincolnshire now, is that right? Yeah. Oh, but, oh, 30 years ago a long time ago, you and your three sisters, Mary and Anne and Jean, you were fostered out by a family and you were all living on the Isle of Tyree, is yeah. that right? Yeah. Well, I'm sure a lot of people out there, and I certainly didn't, I've never heard of the Isle of Tyree. Where, ex where exactly is that? It's in the Outer Hebrides. In the Outer Hebrides. Yeah. And uh, when you were 15, you left the Outer Hebrides, didn't you? Tell everybody, what, wh where did you go? What did you well, do? I joined the Royal Navy. Yes, what did you do in the Royal Navy? Uh, Chief Petty Officer Ship. Really? And what happened to your three sisters, your Mary and Anne and Jean? Well, I haven't heard from, from then till this. I know, and that was 30 years ago, and indeed that was the whole purpose of your letter to me, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, we've done a bit of searching, Robert. We really did, and we found out that Marion is now living in Fort William, up there in Scotland. Is that a surprise to you? And Anne, your Anne, is living in Oban. Is that how you pronounce it? That's oh, in Scotland as well, isn't it? Yeah. But they're not there tonight. No, we found them after 30 years. Come on, say hello to your sisters. Marion and Anne, they're coming on here. A lovely reunion. Have a sit down here, Robert. And I know you're dying to ask them this question, Robert, to you two sisters. You've kept in touch, have you, for all oh, these yes. years? Mm -hmm. uh, how long have you kept in touch? Anne and I. We've never really We've been never lost. You've Gosh. never really been apart? No. But what about your, your third sister, Jean? Because this is, I'm sure he's dying to know what happened to Jean. She's, She's in, in Canada. Canada. In Canada? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Which part of Canada? Red Deer. Oh, really? Uh -huh. Well, you know, um, up until two days ago, oh, no. we tried to get a passport for your gene. It was ever so difficult because, you know, Canada's 6,000 miles away. But we, we worked it out with a little help of the Foreign Office. And in fact, all you three here, if you were watching the show from the top, you've seen your gene already. Yes, you have. Remember Delta Dawn? No. That's your sister That's Jean. True. Come in, oh, no. Jean, all the way from Canada. Say hello to your family. Better take take a break there. See you in a couple of minutes. <laughs> a surprise phone call. And oh look, look, ladies and gentlemen, it's a tin of beans. <laughs> you know what that means, don't you? Here we go. A million housewives every day pick up a can of beans and say, It's on you. <laughs> oh, you are right. 
And this week, I'm going to phone a Mr. Tony Morley in Leeds. Now, his wife, Teresa, told us all about Tony's mad. Oh, he's mad? He's crackers. He's mad about monkeys. Or, to be exact, he's mad about a particular stuffed toy chimpanzee. He's so mad about it. He's called George, by the way. He's had him since he was three years old. And that makes George 29. Ah. But Teresa, she's crazy. Oh, she's mad at Tony. She says, I've had to restuff it three times. <laughs> I've, had to try, I've had to try and throw it out several times, but it always keeps coming back. And I'm going to ring Tony's neck someday, I promise you. But now I'm going to phone him. Because, you see, it's always been Tony's ambition to have a day out with some real chimp. So I'm going to get him on the phone right now. What do I do? <laughs> oh, yeah, there, there they are. Look, there's all this. And what are we? Yes, ten digits again this week. Because it's all the way to Leeds. And here we go. <laughs> you feel daffering in a can of beans, don't you? <laughs> Where do I talk into? <laughs> oh, it's that little hole there. Yeah. He doesn't get the wind up. Oh. <laughs> Is it ringing? No, it's not even ringing out. Did I dial proper? Oh, there we go. Right. Oh, dear. Hello, ma'am? Hello? Hello? Is that yeah. you, ma'am? Pardon? <laughs> no, I'm not your mother. Who is it? Did you think I was your mother? Well, I'm expecting a call from me, ma'am. Oh, you're expecting a call from me, ma'am? Yeah. Well, well, I won't keep you too long. Does your mother generally call you today, does she? Well, that's what my wife said. She said, no, your ma'am will call in you. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is not your ma'am, Tony. No? No. No, oh, surprise. Oh, was that in background? Pardon? Oh, was that in background? <laughs> Who's this in background? Well, don't worry about that, Tony. I've got a little surprise for you. It's still here. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't know, weak. <laughs> well, don't go weak on me yet, Tony, because, you know, a little bird told me all about you. Actually, it was your wife, Teresa, who wrote and told me all about you. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at her with daggers here. <laughs> and I suppose you're wondering what she wrote and told me about you. I am, yeah. Well, she told me all about George. Oh. She didn't, did she? She did. I mean, you know, this George person is coming between her and your marriage. You realise that, don't you? I realise that, yeah. How old is George now? He's about 23 years old. Well, Teresa said he's, he's, he seems like 29. <laughs> now, yeah, George yeah. is... I, I got him when I was about three years old. That's right. Well, how old are you now, Tony? 32. <laughs> <laughs> So you lie about your age as well. <laughs> yes, I know the if feeling well. Yes. <laughs> but your wife says that all oh, she stuffed it about three times. That's right, yeah. And she's tried to throw it out in the bin and you keep on bringing him back. That's right. I mean, what's George got that Teresa hasn't got? He's got a lovely personality. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know it's always been your ambition, Tony, to go to a chimp's tea party, is that right? That's right, yeah. Yes. Well, surprise, surprise. We've arranged that for you. Oh, my. <laughs> With real live chimps. And guess what? What? You can bring George along as well. <laughs> is that all right? That's, that's fine, is that? And I know, I know George has got a lovely personality, but you can also bring Teresa as well. <laughs> all right. Okay. And will you come and tell us all about it on next week's show? I will do. Oh, I'd love to. Thanks a lot, Tony. I won't keep you any longer because I know your mum's going to call you any minute. All right, love? I think that's just been a bit of a practical joke. She's looking at <laughs> <her> head <laughs> Well, nevertheless, I'll see you next week. All right, love? Thanks very much, Stella. All right, okay. Tony. I'll look forward to that. Bye-bye. Ta-ra, love. Bye-bye. Ta-ra. Ta-ra. somebody who'd be welcome at any tea party. In fact, I'd share a tea bag with him any time. It's gorgeous Gordon Burns.
You say the most romantic things. Do I really? Yes. <laughs> well, I try very hard, Gordon, I do. <laughs> Talking about the romantic things that you say, you never guess who I got a letter from this week. Oh, go on, hit me with it, go on. Mr. Suave. <laughs> a real Mr. Suave. Really? Yes, he's called Louis Suave. He comes from Doncaster. Uh, he spells it S-O-A-V-E. And his wife, Rosemary, wrote and said that uh, every Sunday when you say, where are you, Mr. Suave, uh, he says to you via the TV set, I'm here. <laughs> well, shall we both say hello to him now? You go first. Hello, Mr. Suave. <laughs> And from one suave to another. <laughs> Let me say hello to you, Louis, to your wife, Rosemary, and also the children, Claudia and Nathan. Hello. And uh, I sincerely say to you, Louis, I hope you don't get teased as much as I do. <laughs> now, on we go. How many of you can remember what you were doing on Christmas Day, 1945? I can't. Well, only just. Well, these Bevin boys must have opened their presents early that morning because on Christmas Day, 1945, they rushed off to Todger Palmer's wedding. Denny Palmer, nicknamed Todger because he was the one who had to todge along with the pit pony, is keen to contact his old mates. They all worked at Gedling Colliery in Nottinghamshire and were billeted together at the Bevan Boys Hostel in Hucknall Knots. So, if you recognise yourself from the photo and remember those early morning coach rides down to Pitt, then do please give us a ring. Now, 21 years ago, three young teachers, Roseanne Balfour, Joan Daggy and Erwin Singer, were hired to teach at a new school in Cuaratero, Mexico. They began with four students in September 1964 and ended up with 50 nine months later. During that year, they went everywhere together, but sadly had to part in 1965. Joan and Owen have since got married to each other and now want to get in touch with their dear lost friend. They feel sure Roseanne can't have forgotten those sleepless nights in a hammock or the desert search for cactus fruit. How could anyone? So, Roseanne, if you're watching, please get in touch with us. Now, how many men in their 70s have long blonde wigs? Well, I should keep quiet if you have, but we can tell you that Frederick Scutts does, and his blonde wig is a treasured possession. As you can see, it helped put the finishing touches to many a little outfit. You see, Frederick and his friend Sammy helped to entertain the troops during the war, and as the Y 5th Divisional Concert Party was rather short of lady members, Fred got the job. Now, that was over 40 years ago, and now Fred wants to try and contact his old army mate and concert partner, Sammy Sampson. So, Sammy... Give us a ring, please, and you can relive those old days of grease paint and lights. Well, there's plenty of lights here, but hardly any grease paint over there. Just a very natural-looking cell. Oh, isn't that lovely? Except the six-inch false eyelashes that I'm wearing tonight. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Gordon. We'll see you later on. Back a bit later, yes. Oh, lovely. Now, don't we come up with some smashing stuff on Searchline? And I'm sure Anne Linney and her sister Cora agree with me. Where are you girls? Where are the two girls? Yes, you wrote to our search line a couple of weeks back, didn't you, loves? Yes. Because yes. you wanted to find some friends of yours that you were brought up with in a children's home, didn't you? Yes, that's right. And we've had a lot of success in finding one good friend of yours of, oh, it must be a lot of years, about 25 years ago, is it? Yes, about that, yeah. Yes. And uh, what was her name? Noreen Carter. Noreen Carter. Yeah, but she was a bit shy. We found her for you on the search line. But she was a bit shy. She really didn't want to come to the studio for a reunion. So we put you in touch with her and you telephoned her. And the good news is that you've arranged to go up to Liverpool because Noreen's from Liverpool. You're going up next weekend yeah. to have your little reunion there, aren't you? Yes, that's right. Yeah. Isn't that exciting? Yeah, we're looking forward to it very much, yes. Well, I've got even more exciting news because after that phone call, she rang us. And she was a desperate woman because she said she really couldn't wait till next weekend to see you. But she wanted to see you right now, so if the two of you would stand up. And indeed, come on girls, stand up. And look behind you, you'll see Noreen coming down. You can save the petrol money now, can't you? <laughs> Are you glad you came now, Nori? 
Yeah, I am so. Happy. Oh, well, I look forward to seeing you after the show. All right, love. We can talk about Scouse times in Liverpool. Right. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Well, last week I surprised a Wild West fanatic, Brian Stafford, on the phone. And his friends reckon he's quick on the draw, so I challenged him to a duel. So come on in, the one and only Brian Stafford. And don't you look the part, Brian. Doesn't he look sensational, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> yes. Who does he remind you of? <laughs> Who said deputy dog? <laughs> yes, you remind everybody, at least everybody down there. You remind everybody of Clint Eastwood. You look absolutely smashing. And you know, when I phoned you on the telephone last week, Brian, you were absolutely shocked and stunned, weren't you? I was speechless. Yes, I know. And you know who put me up to that? One of your best mates who's sitting in the audience tonight. Well, Wild Bill over there. The one with the act. <laughs> but now I challenged you to a duel, didn't I? Yes. I certainly did. And I, you know, I, I believe you're quick on the draw. Is that right? Fairly quick. Oh, he even speaks like Clint Eastwood as well. <laughs> All right, I'll be fair with you then. I'll give you up to the count of three. That's fair, isn't it? If I count to three, you've got to draw. Here we go. Okay, blue eyes. <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> that was quick. <laughs> yes, it did. Right. I got as far as that just sprayed all over you. And that was it. You could, well, I think I can do better than that, you know, Brian. I mean, if I had a gun, if you've got a gun for me, I could do it all. Where are you going? Oh, look, he's got a gun. And it's got me name on, Scylla. Oh, isn't that lovely? Yes. Would you like to put it... Which way does it go? Yes, come on, Brian. Get the old belt on. <laughs> Wait. Oh, hey. I quite like this. <laughs> That's it. Isn't that smashing? Right. Right. I won't do that up. Yes. Oh, yes. Better take that off. All right. Okay. You dirty. <laughs> what? I'm getting in the mood now. I'm getting in the mood. <laughs> Would you like to see how fast I am on the draw? I would. Would you like to see it again? <laughs> all right, Brian, I am ready. Do your stuff. Tell me exactly what you want me to do. All right? What? Just, uh, just hold the trigger back. Yes? Keep the trigger back. Fan the ammo back. Right, OK. I've got that. Now I've seen our kids play it in the house. No. We'll see how quick you are. All right, yes, in your own time. I'll go for the green balloon. When the light comes on. When the red light goes on. Draw. OK. <laughs> oh, God. Oh! <laughs> Brian, that has certainly cleared the sinuses. <laughs> but, you know, it's not fair, you know. It's not fair. I mean, you've been doing... How long have you been doing this kind Six of thing? Six years. Six years? Well, I think I should have somebody, you know, my own size. Preferably female. And we've got a lot of females. We've got a lot of women sitting out there in our audience tonight. I'm sure they're all dying to have a duel with me, aren't you, girls? <laughs> you see, there's lots of them. Who do you fancy, Brian? How about that lady there? She wasn't waving, though. <laughs> That's why I chose her. Is that why you chose her, oh, you little rascal? Yes, she'll do for me. Yes, that lady sitting in the lovely pink blouse, would you like to come and join us, please? Thanks a lot. How do you do? Can you, can you tell us your name, please? Yes, it's Betty Martin. Hello, Betty, and this is our Brian. Hello, Brian. Do you think he looks like Clint Eastwood? Oh, yes, I do. Oh. <laughs> Put him down, you never know where he's been. <laughs> well, Betty, are you ready for our duel? Yeah. Because okay. they're very heavy, these guns. Feel the weight of that. Oh, yeah. Yes, come on, I'm going to enjoy this. I'm going to enjoy <laughs> killing you. Go on, have you got a gun for it? Right. Thank you. All Thank right. You. 
Now, Brian, give her a few tips. What does she have to do? Just hold the trigger back. Yes. And fan the ammo back. Right. Like that. Bang, bang. <laughs> All right, Betty, this is it. We're going to go back to back. We're going to walk three paces. And on the count of three, we're going to fire. OK. Right. Here we go. One, two, three. Where you go? Don't shoot. <laughs> Don't shoot. Come here, Betty. Come here, Betty. No, don't shoot me. Because if you would have shot me there... I wouldn't have let you in on the surprise that we've got, we've got coming up for you. And we've certainly got a surprise for you. Haven't we, Brian? Yeah. Yes. And before we let you in on that surprise, I think we ought to say a very big thank you to Brian Stafford here, because he's been a mob. <laughs> I suppose you're wondering why, you know, I've got you here like this. Yes. Well, it's your own fault, you know. <laughs> you only got to blame yourself. Never mind about your husband up there. <laughs> you wrote us a couple of weeks ago, and you told us all about, you know, a long-lost boyfriend of yours. Yes. When you were just but a mere slip of a girl. Yes. <laughs> now, this boyfriend of yours is Colin. That's right, yes. And you told us in your letter that you used to go to the local hops and you were mad on all the latest pop music at that time. And there was one particular rock and roll blues singer that you absolutely <laughs> adored. Is that right? Yes, it certainly is. Well, tell everybody who he was. Fats Domino. Fats Domino. Well, what did Colin have to do with this? Because you see, Colin, from your letter, judging by your letter, he yes. said that if ever Fats Domino, ladies and gentlemen, ever came to this country, Colin, your beau at that time, would buy you tickets and take you to see his show. Is that yes. right? Yes. Yes. Well, I must read a bit of your letter. It's back here somewhere. This is what it says. Oh. I, well, but, you know, Fat Domino is coming to this country in a couple yes. of weeks' time. Yes. And this is why you wrote this letter. Yes, really, yes. He's going to be appearing at the Royal Albert Hall. That's right. And this is what Betty says. It made me giggle. I couldn't get anyone to take me. Then I remembered... Where is Colin? Oh. Or does Colin remember? <gasps> Indeed, does Colin want to remember? <laughs> can Colin afford to remember? <laughs> well, not only can Colin remember, but he's here. Oh my. Come in, Colin. <laughs> well, that's what I was just going to ask you. Has he changed at all? A little mature. Yes. <laughs> well, aren't we all, though? Yes, long, really. How long is it since that day that you took you to all those hops and everything? Well, it was a long time ago. I yes. was 16. Was it a time. sort of a serious relationship? <gasps> oh, like? no, it wasn't. That was the trouble. I wanted it to be. And he sort of, you know, pat on the oh, head. Oh, he gave you the elbow, did he? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, but now you're not, you don't regret it now that you've seen him. No, no. Well, now that he's here in the flesh, um, you know, go on. What? Well, ask him, you know. I mean, oh. you, you know, he promised to take me all those years ago. Do you remember asking him to... Yes. Ask him. You do? Oh, yes. God. Well, ask him. Well, you ask him now. Are you going to take me to see Fats Domino? My yes. husband, Yes, I think so. Oh, you You're going to take her to see yes. Fats Domino? Yeah. Have you got the tickets? No, I haven't got oh. the tickets. <laughs> well, it's very expensive, you know. Yes. But don't worry about that, because we have got you the tickets. Oh, surprise, no. surprise. <laughs> Here they are. You are going to the Royal Albert Hall in a couple of weeks' time. <sighs> Yes. You're not going alone. You can take your husband. You can take your wife. <laughs> so there you are, Betty. With the compliments of surprise, surprise. Enjoy your night out with Frank Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Tell me how you got on, all right? I will do, yes. And will you request, you know, yes. for me? Could yes. Ask him, could he sing Blueberry oh, or just will. Priscilla? Just for you, yeah. Because we've arranged when he is there for you to go backstage oh, and have a drink no. with him. Isn't that oh, lovely? It's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, oh, I hope exactly. you still like him. <laughs> Finish there. Oh no. What do you mean, oh no? <laughs> it's for you. -hoo. One more surprise for you, Betty. Yes, you, you better answer it, you know. It's not for me, it's for you. 
beans. It's not the baked beans, no, it's, just, <laughs> it's the phone. Hello, Betty? Hello? Hello, Betty? Hello? Hello, Betty? Hello? Mm, yeah, this is Betty. Yeah, how you do? I'm all right, thank you. Is it very stormy now? Oh. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the living room right now. <gasps> oh, no. Uh -huh. uh, 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 yeah, I certainly am, yes. Yeah, I'm here in New Orleans. You are? Oh, yeah. And I'm looking forward to coming over here soon. I hope to get a chance to meet you in person. Yeah, I hope to meet you as well. I'll yeah, certainly be there. Yeah, this is Fab Domino. Yeah, I'll certainly be there, and I look forward to seeing your show. I'm sorry, it does as well. And Scylla wants to say <laughs> she wants, would like to be there as well. All right, I'll be glad to meet both of you when I get over there. Okay, I look forward to seeing you. Okay, Ben. Thank you very much. All right. Bye. Bye. Surprise, surprise! <laughs> We're going to take a break there. See you in a couple of minutes. See you then. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to part three. And right away, we're going to whip over to Ipswich because we had a letter from a certain Sarah Frampton telling us that her mum, Joan, had this fantasy about having a custard pie fight, just like they do in the old silent movies. So our Bob went along to surprise her in more ways than one. I'm outside a bakery in Ipswich and I've come to surprise a lady called Joan Hames. Her ambition has always been to be in a custard pie fight. I can arrange that. Joan Hames, good morning. Oh, what surprise, on? surprise. How oh, are yeah. you, Joan? Very well, thank you. You think you've come to have a look at these cakes, don't you? Yes. Load of rubbish. We heard <laughs> that you're kinky about custard pies, Joan, is that right? Oh, no. Yes, we have. Oh. And not eating them, of course, but throwing them. Yes. Is that right? That's right. You love all those things. I'd love to have a go, yeah. Well, we're, we're going to do it for you, Joan. We're going to make a little mini movie like those old Lola and Hardy films. Oh, God. Me and you. Is that all right? <laughs> yeah, I'll have a go. And we thought it might be better, Joan, because they, they, had, a, they had quite a big cast in those days, didn't they? Yeah. So we thought it might be better if we get some other people in the cast, um, like uh, your husband, Hugh, your daughter, Sarah, Hugh? and your son-in-law, Tony. Rotten devils! <laughs> oh! How on earth did you do this? <laughs> With oh! difficulty, Joan, but we're here. Certainly. Just for you. And we're going to have a nice big custard pie fight, okay? So that's another fine mess I can get you into, Stanley. Gosh! Come with me. Come on, Joe. <laughs> so sit back, because it's like down for the big feature. And please, no crunching crisps at the back, if you please. <laughs>
say you wanted the custard pie fight, didn't you, Joe? I did. Did you enjoy it? Very much. You mad <laughs> <Great>. fool. <laughs> You're crazy. But now you know where I'm going now. I'm going back over to gorgeous Gordon because it's time, once again, for our search line. Gordon? Well, I want you to look at a very handsome man. His name is Albi Ha, and this was his message to Searchline. Please, please help me find my childhood sweetheart. Well, we'll do our best to help him find Margaret. You see, in 1935, Albi was the milk boy in the Somerset village of Martok. And at the time, he was head over heels in love with Margaret, although he was too shy to say so. Once, when she had to go out, he waited patiently for her all day under a tree by the railway line. Oh. A short while after, Margaret and her family left the village and left behind a broken-hearted Alby. Well, that was more than 50 years ago. But Alby would dearly love to know what became of Margaret and her family. So, Margaret, if you remember that caring little milk boy from your childhood days, Please get in touch with us. And now for the quickies this week. We're looking for Violet Nichols and her daughter Jacqueline, last known in Newell Street, London. If you're watching, please give us a ring. And Alan Steele. As a boy, he was evacuated from Sunderland to Middleton on the Wolds in Yorkshire and stayed with the Burnett family. If you're watching, Alan, get in touch with us, please. As usual, our researchers will be on 01-834-9090 to take your calls. But if you can't get through, then, as always, please write to us at Searchline, Surprise, Surprise, London Weekend Television, London, SE19LT. That's the lot from Searchline for this week. So it's back now to Silla. Ladies and gentlemen, Gordon Burns. a chain reaction with one of our search lines a few weeks ago we asked you all to help the mr. and mrs. Bradley to find their old friends the prices after 20 years and last week on the show we reunited the Bradleys with the prices well after the show we got a letter from some of the Bradley's relatives who hadn't seen them for 40 years and they've arranged their own surprise surprise get-together well who knows where all this will end but don't worry we want you to still keep writing in, keep them letters coming in. Well now, we've got a lovely little film to show you, but before we do, I'd like to ask a Katie Hassan to join me, because the film's about her daughter, Marina. Now, can you come and join me, Katie? Graeme's up there to help you. Yes, Graeme, could you bring Katie down, please? down there. Well, you look absolutely marvellous, Katie. And, and I must tell everybody out there, ladies and gentlemen, you've just watched Katie walk down the stairs and over to me. But, you know, there are times when she can't walk at all because Katie suffers from multiple sclerosis. Isn't that right, Katie? Mm -hmm. Now, yes. how long have you had MS? It's been diagnosed for three years, but I've probably had it for a good deal longer than that. Yes, well, I think you're ever so brave coming on here and <laughs> telling everybody out there all about it. But one of the main, one of the main reasons for you living in this life is, is your little daughter, Marina, isn't it? Yes. Yes. How old is Marina? Four. Just four. And you wrote us a letter about Marina because you've got a, a twin sister living in America, haven't you? Mm, that's right, yes. You're Judy. Yes. And Marina has never ever seen Judy. No. And vice versa. And you thought, wouldn't it be nice if Surprise Surprise made a special film mm. so you could send it over to your, your Judy over there in America? Yes. Well, I think you'd be very pleased with this because the other day, as you know, we sent our Bob Calgies all the way over to Milton Keynes to spend a few hours with you and your daughter. Mm. And I know when you see the film, you'd be very pleased with the result. Pick you up. Come on then, dumb. Ooh. <laughs> Hello, Hello, Katie. Boy. You must be Marina. Come on How in. How are you? All right. Thanks very much indeed. You stay there, Spitz. Behave yourself. <laughs> Office, please. Ooh. Come on in. Thanks very much. Would you like some tea, Bob? Oh, a cup of tea, yes, please. Right. And while I'm doing this, would you like some scrambled egg? Scrambled eggs, oh, my favourite. 
Will you fix the scrambled egg? Thanks. Can I do it now? I must practice this when I get home. Oh, no, I don't bang it. Bang it. Marina's a lovely girl. Is she very helpful around the house for you? Oh, she's terrific. I couldn't manage without her. I really couldn't. Three of them? She can do cooking. everything. Everything. Cooking, making beds, hoovering, washing up. Has yeah, she ever done anything that's gone wrong really? Decorating the kitchen. And she wanted to help. She was about two. And I gave her a little bit of paint and a brush and told her that she could paint the lower half of the walls while I did the ceiling. And I was painting away quite happily and I kept saying, are you all right? And she kept saying, yes, I'm fine, I'm fine. And when I looked down, eventually, she'd painted the cooker and the fridge <laughs> and the washing machine <laughs> and the floor. <laughs> Why are there two pieces of toast? I think we need two pieces of toast to put all this egg on. Hungry. <laughs> Thank you very much. Excellent. Where's mine? <laughs> and when, when is she five? October. And she starts school in? Officially, not till next January. There's a slim chance that we might be able to get her in a bit sooner. Because she's very bright. She's actually very bright. bright enough now. Can you read? Can you read me a bit? Lollipop. I like those. I like lollipops. Does spit as well. He does. You like the orange ones, don't you? He likes chewing them. And swing. swing. Does spit like to swing? Well, it depends. You're not very good on swings, are you? Tree. Tree? No, you can't. Stop it. <laughs> and how would you describe Marina to your sister? Like any other ch kid of her age, but a little bit extra, in every way, in everything. She is lovely. She's super. girl you've got there. Oh, she is. She's terrific. And I know your Judy back over there in America, she's going to be thrilled, isn't she? She's, oh, I think so. Too. She's so pretty. Mm. And you, you are identical twins, aren't you? You and your Judy. Mm. Yes. And what about when you were teenagers? Didn't that cause a little bit of confusion at times? Sometimes. <laughs> what about... Had... What happened? Uh, we occasionally swapped boyfriends. You did? <laughs> <laughs> um... But more often it was useful if I wanted to get out of a date. I could go to the door and pretend I was my sister and say, I'm sorry, Katie can't come out tonight. She's not very well. Oh, really? Well, that comes in handy when you've got an identical twin. Oh, yes. Well, I'm sure she's going to absolutely adore that piece of film there. I'm oh, ever excellent. so pleased for you. Thank you for making it. Oh, it, my pleasure. Our pleasure. But I know one, one of your main worries, and you've told me, one of your main fears is that uh, one of these days may come that you might be well enough to look after Marina. Mm. Uh, but your sister Judy and her husband Mark have always assured you that whatever happens, mm. and you've no need to worry about this, no. they're really going to take care of Marina, so you've no need to worry about that. But you haven't seen your sister Judy for seven years now, mm. have you? No. no. Well, it's not surprising, them being over in America. Mm. Yes, but I don't think she'll have to wait that long, you know, because we've flown them all the way over. Your sister Judy, your brother-in-law Mark, and the baby was just three months old, little Susanna, and here they are all tonight. Come in, see your identical... I've been holding her all day. She's beautiful. Do you want to hold her, Katie? Mm. Yes. <laughs> yes, isn't that super? Oh. Yes, I'm going to look at this, look at these little toes. Oh, I'm getting all broody again. <laughs> isn't it sweet? But you know, we can't end the show, Katie. We can't end the show without the star of that particular film. You know that, don't you? Oh, pumpkin. <laughs> yes, pumpkin. your very own pumpkin. And to bring your very own pumpkin on is my own pumpkin. Come on, Bob. Bring Marina on. Come on.
sitting there at home. We hope you've enjoyed Surprise Surprise this week. We all hope you'll join us next week for the last show in the present series. And I can't say goodnight without going over to our Bob. Good night, Bob. Good night, Phyllis.